Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Blood Knight, The Legend of Mary Hatchet, who will survive to tell her tale. Directed by Frank Sabatella, starring Danielle Harris, Bill Mosley, Samantha Song, and Nate Dushku. This movie is about a group of teens that are having a party in celebration of the anniversary of the death of Mary Hatchet, an axe murderer who died 20 years ago. In an accidental summoning, Mary Hatchet is back and she's out to get revenge. This is a recommendation from our top donator over on Patreon. You all know his name. It's Deke. Coming at you with another hot one here. We've got Blood Knight because of the three B's, he says. Babes, blood, and what's the other one? Boobs. boobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you feel like you can match the babes and the boobs up, I think. Sometimes you don't get boobs when you get babes. You're right. This time we got all three. Let's move on to our likes. And what better way to kick it off than talking about the three B's? Because, yes, we did have boobs, we had babes, and we had blood. In fact... The film started off with some excellent side boob. Probably would... some of like the strongest side boob that I've seen. Unfortunately, in like a weird circumstance, because it is Mary Hatchet herself in a psychiatric ward after murdering her family. Crazy as she is, she's still got some great breasts. They're well rested. Risen. <laughs> You sound like a fucking baker or something. <laughs> Before we continue, I we probably are going to spoil a lot of this movie. I think that it wouldn't matter. The things that we're going to talk about, you'll see a mi like coming from a mile away, including the major twist of the movie, which everybody even knows just knowing that Danielle Harris is in the movie. Oh my god. Danielle Harris, the love of my life. She's great, obviously. Looking like a snack. She's stylish. I, li I like the like uniform look in this one. Yeah, she looks kind of like she belongs in... The Harry Potter universe. All the girls are absolutely beautiful. And some of them get naked and topless. They're having sex, doing fun strip teases. So there's a lot of sexy moments. When we got to about an hour, I had to pause it to make a drink. And like the movie just flew by, probably because of all the babes and the boobs and the blood. And speaking of the blood, the blood is pretty quality. We, when people get stabbed or something, there's just like a ton of blood. Especially like the first time we see blood, blood sprays. Yeah, they do a good job creating prosthetic heads or prosthetic cuts. There's blood everywhere. Floors, walls, there's even blood on bums. Because this is a celebration in the town of Blood Night, people are like egging and throwing toilet paper on houses and stuff. And because it also has to do with menstruation, the reason why Mary hatchet was kind of nuts as she had like some menstruation disease or disorder that caused her to go crazy when she had her period. It would explain some of like the tampons that they had just hanging up over town. And like there was so much like destruction. People were like put in the air out of tires and cars, breaking windows. Like this was like overboard. People just keep coming even though they weren't invited to this party. And you have a cast of probably like 12 to 15 people. And what's also good about this is Bill Mosley actually has a role in this film. A lot of the times, it's just like a cameo. You see his name in the credits, and he's only on for like one scene, maybe 10 seconds tops. But in this one, he played Gus, who worked at the graveyard, but actually also worked at the Institute. So he's kind of like the guide to these kids. He's spooking them with those scary stories, but at the same time, he's like solving the problem. And I love seeing Bill Mosley, so he was great in this film. Except he can't open a door worth shit. Now, what didn't we like? I would like to kick it off with the editing of this film. The biggest issue I have is there is numerous fades to black. Yes, I get that time is passing, but the constant fade just takes you out of the film. I felt the same way, but uh, not necessarily about the fades, but... Some of like the really quick edits. And I understood because you're supposed to be disoriented, but it got kind of overwhelming. I know it was intentional, but I still don't like it. I also don't like their choice of showcasing the kills. Because when a character dies, it goes to a quick cut and it almost makes it seem as though it's off screen. But then at the end of the film, they do a kill recap where you actually get to see the kills. So the impact isn't there. I rather see the kill and then in the recap, just 
go off screen. Or not have a recap. You didn't need it. Everybody knew what the twist was. Get this. Mary Hatchett got raped in an institute. That she had a kid that she was told was dead. We move 20 years into the future. A new person arrives and then disappears for 90% of the movie and she happens to be huge in the horror community. Who could this person be? The moment we heard a baby existed, it's like, it's Daniel Harris. And then they had this two and a half minute recap of the movie. Did you know she wasn't in the movie, so this is what she was doing, and it shows like <laughs> the kills again. Every single person is gonna know what she was doing at those moments because you didn't see her and people were dying. And yes, you do get like the classic Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein ending where like, oh, there actually is a Mary Hatchet. Who but I mean, it's Danielle Harris and it's very evident. Yes, the film does fly by, which normally is a good thing that you're not bored, but the fact that they crunch everything in the final arc in under 10 minutes really doesn't have as much of an impact for what was built up to that point. Like we said, there's a huge cast, so there's lots of people to die and get killed off but they don't start getting killed off till about 50 minutes into the movie. Well, I wasn't ever wondering when are these people gonna die because I actually enjoyed our characters. I'm like, wait, there's so many people and so little time left, what are they gonna do here? And so most of the kills you're gonna have either off screen or yeah, very rushed and not shown. And if things were spaced out a little bit differently, it would have been better. Maybe your recap reel is gonna be a little bit longer. Maybe that's why they did it. It's like, oh, we want to recap all the kills so we can show our genius off. Tuck your genius back in and let's go. I like seeing Danielle Harris, whether she's a victim or a killer, but I thought that she wasn't the greatest killer. I think she had one of the weakest axe throws I've ever seen in my life. And it sucks to say about somebody that I crush on so bad, but she could barely hold the pickaxe or whatever she had. And she's not threatening. She's like five foot nothing. And she's like storming towards this building. And it was probably the shot types that they were using because like a wide shot with a very small person doesn't look intimidating, ever. They needed to choose their shots a little bit more wise around her because she is small to make her look intimidating. Low angle shots do that significantly well. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything like that. They had the camera here, and so her head's just in frame and stuff. Like, it was kind of odd the way that they shot her considering she was supposed to be this menacing figure towards the end of the film. Considering the film involved blood and a character named Mary, I was actually disappointed they didn't go the cliche route and play a game of Bloody Mary. Like the film starts off with a character staring in the mirror who happens to be Mary and she's gonna be covered in blood. If you have this whole thing of, oh, crazy Mary Hatchet, uh, don't summon her, you would assume it would be the Bloody Mary considering it's on Blood Night that involves Mary. Not one reference to Bloody Mary. <laughs> yes. Why Why just take a random Ouija board and summon someone that way? Like, I guess that's just a standard way to summon. When everyone's making drinks, why didn't you make a Bloody Mary? There's like a ton of little things that they could have added to kind of make it a little more enjoyable. Or like tip of the hat to other legends that do exist in our world and not necessarily maybe their world. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. This is one of those movies I've had on my watch list for a long time and I'm glad Deke recommended it. This movie came out in 2009, it went under the radar, and it has Bill Mosley and Danielle Harris, both of which I love, and it has babes, boobs, and blood. I enjoyed the story, I liked our cast, and I thought they're conversations were all like really natural which made the movie kind of speed along but unfortunately it sped along too fast without killing enough people considering the large cast. I think the ending was a little subpar because we already knew what was gonna happen. So the fact that they built this movie around a twist and you already know what the twist is going to be, then it's not that enjoyable. I still had a fun time, but there was so much that they could have done to improve this movie. I think that this could have been a way better movie and a cult favorite had it had just a few tweaks. So I'm gonna give this two and a half best comebacks of all times out of five. That's pretty sexy, man. Oh, yeah, that's hot. I mean, I hit that. Your mom's hot. I hit that. This one was one that I enjoyed, but I found there's a lot to improve on it, especially if they ever decide to make a sequel, because 
there's a lot of things that they rushed where they could have took their time with, especially in the final arc. They had really good special effects. They just didn't place them properly in the film. We got a recap at the end where we saw everything and building up to that, we didn't get a real taste because most of the stuff was done off screen. They were focused more on a story driven twist than the actual concept and world around them. But it's also still a fun film. You have great characters that are put in very entertaining situations and a killer with a lot of potential. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film two talking a big game about your meat out of five. Man, I'm telling you, mommy wants my salami home. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, there are links in the description where you can find it. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.